97.2. Your city. Your Calm FM. Um, there's, there's been a lot of negative coverage uh, in the press, uh, uh, you know, surrounding professional rugby um, in the last week or two. I'm thinking mainly sort of the you know, the fallout from um, the uh, these reports the RFU have been uh, been writing. Yeah. Um, do, do you think that the the, press, the professional game nowadays could can learn anything from you know, what is now the amateur game, the sort of the university level game, the sort of you know the, the lower cl- club division uh, level uh, level game of rugby? Do you think? You know, there's there's something that they can learn from that. Uh, I suppose not, no, mm. because I think we, are, we at, at Twickenham there is a problem with uh, the the generations that have come through the amateur game still feel that they have a moral authority over the professional game, right? And they can't; they have to let it go. The two games are almost divorced now, mm. and I think it's uh, we have reached the point now where Twickenham must let the professional game look after itself. There must obviously be contact because the, the, the starting point for anybody's career must be in the, in the amateur game. But those that run the amateur game must, must leave the running of the professional game to new professionals. And I mean new professionals. Mm. And Twickenham needs a huge clear out. And everybody struggles with uh, professionalism. You know, the, the sport is only you know, 16 years old and Wales took an age to get used to it. And uh, yeah. everybody has, has struggled. We were dropped into professionalism from a very great height, totally unprepared. And it's basically just Twickenham's turn to, to suffer a bit of pain. Right. But I think they'll come through it. I think actually the more, <laughs> the, the more exposing the revelations, the quicker they will have to put the house in order. Yeah. And I think it's, it, it strikes me that the players haven't come through this particularly well as a, as a collective. I think individually they're fine, but they went into a sort of collective mess and issued themselves with some very bad advice and, and, and got a lot of things wrong. But that doesn't fundamentally change the fact that uh, individually they're still very good players. And when they do gel again, England will very quickly recover, uh, I'm sure. And that's good for everybody. Mm. You know, when yeah. Wales win the next Grand Slam, I'd, 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 no, I'd like it to be. I'd, I'd like it to be against the five best teams in the world. That's a proper Grand Slam against world-class sides. Yeah, uh, yeah we've absolutely. all got to. We've all got to pull each other through through these days. Mm. Yeah, yeah, obviously, you, you 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 won the the varsity match a couple of times. Um, yeah, there must have been some great celebrations. Um, I don't. Well, I don't know how much you remember of those celebrations. No, no, I remember. <laughs> well, we always went to the same place, which which helps the. Uh, the memory we always went to the um oh my word what's it called the old or oh, the cafe royal the cafe oh, royal right. right oh my word i nearly had a senior <laughs> moment on you then that could have shut down the network <laughs> we went to the cafe royal and we just partied um yeah quite long quite hard into the night fantastic fantastic yeah. well hopefully uh if we the cambridge boys will be uh doing the same again this year uh thank you very much for for coming and talking to us uh, on the phone good luck to the team all the best thank you very much eddie